sick of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, Thomas. 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 How many times did I call your name? Three times, right? In case you are not aware, in my village, when an elder calls your name three times, it means you are in big trouble. Thomas, why are you so skeptical? Why are you so pessimistic? Why do you always look at things from a negative point of view? Why are you so suspicious? Can't you just believe, even for once? Oh, now I know why your parents gave you the name Thomas. I have not checked myself, but the other day I overheard some person saying that your name Thomas means the doubting one. Can you imagine how happy and eager the other apostles were to share the news with you that Jesus was back to life? And where were you when Jesus appeared to them last Sunday? Why were you not with them? I know. It's because you are so suspicious and doubtful that you decided to isolate yourself and become man alone. And when those who saw him decided to break the news to you, you had the boldness to say, unless you set your eyes on the marks made by the nails on his hands and put your fingers into the marks, you would not believe. Who do you think you are? Thomas, this is not the first time that you are showing yourself. I have access to your track record. You remember the other day, not long ago, when Jesus got the news that Lazarus was dead. Jesus told you and the other apostles to follow him to Bethany where Lazarus lived. What was your response? You turned to the other apostles and you said to them, Let us go that we may die with him. Who told you that Jesus was going to Bethany to die? Your negative mind, right? That's not all. Not long after that, it was at the Last Supper, after Jesus washed your feet along with the feet of the other apostles, Jesus told you that he would be going to heaven to meet his father and that he would prepare a place for you there. What was your response? No, you can't deny it. Oh, you, you've forgotten? I'll remind you because it is on record. While the other apostles were trying to digest what Jesus told them, you said, since we don't know the way or we don't even know where you are going to. How can we know the way? Thomas, must you question everybody and everything all the time? Can't you just listen for once and understand what is going on before you raise questions? Thomas, I'm talking to you. Answer me. Why are you quiet? And just so you know, in my village, it is an insult to remain quiet when an elder is asking you questions. Okay, you want to talk? I'll listen to you. Now tell me, why? Father Emmanuel. Father Emmanuel. Father Emmanuel. How many times did I call your name? Three times, right? Okay. 
In case you are not aware, in my village, when an accused person calls your name three consecutive times, it means you have stepped beyond your boundaries. You accused me of always looking at things from the negative point of view. But are you not guiltier than I am in this matter? Can you not see that you have failed to realize the positive role I have played in the story of the resurrection of Jesus? Can you not see that you are the one who is only focusing on what you perceive to be negative about me in the gospel? Father Emmanuel, yes, you were right when you called me Thomas, but you were wrong when you said the meaning of Thomas is the doubting one. Just for the record, my name Thomas comes is the Greek word or the Greek name for the Aramaic name Taoma, which means twin. Did you hear that? Twin. And as a twin, I don't just look at one side of the story. I don't just look at one side of the coin. I always look at all sides of the story so as to come up with an objective conclusion about every story. You only heard from gossips that my name means the doubting one, and you went ahead to believe. Why did you not ask me, the owner of the name, to tell you the meaning of my name? Learn to listen to the other side of the story so that you don't get into trouble. Father Emmanuel, with all your studies and reflections, have you not realized that my doubt has given more credibility to the story of the resurrection than the faith of the other apostles has done? Have you not realized that it is because I doubted that no one can truly say today that the story of the resurrection was only concocted and propagated by a bunch of gullible and uneducated apostles? Have you not realized that my role as the leader of the opposition party among the apostles has now made it possible for you to say that even among the apostles, the story of the resurrection of Jesus was first challenged, tested before it was trusted? Can't you see how I have helped you? Now, today, if among you there are atheists, there are skeptics, there are unbelievers, who are challenging the truth of the story of the resurrection of Jesus, you can easily tell them that they are not the first, that they are saying nothing new, that even among the apostles, those who lived when it happened, that one of them challenged the truth of the story. But it was proven beyond doubt, and he made his submission, saying, My Lord and my God. Father Emmanuel, now I want you to thank me. Look at me and say thank you to me. Do you know why? Listen to what Jesus just said. Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. See what I've done for you? Because I doubted, Jesus has blessed you. Had it been I did not doubt, Jesus would not have promised the blessing on those who are yet to be born. Rather than blaming me, take your time to thank me. Yes, I know you see me as the worst of the apostles, 
with the exception of Judas Iscariot. You are so eloquent in preaching about my doubt, but why not focus on the good things I have done? You remember what Jesus said the other day? He said, the first will be last, and the last will be first. Can't you see that my life is a testimony to what Jesus had said? Yes, it is on record that I was the last of the apostles to believe the story of the resurrection of Jesus. But it is also on record that I became the first to profess belief in the divinity of Jesus. Do you understand what I mean? For three years, all of us, the 12 apostles, we are with Jesus going from village to another village, one city to another city. We are with Jesus. We called him Lord. We called him Master. We called him Teacher. We called him Rabbi. And that was it. No more. And even the other day, when Peter gave the answer that he gave that led to uh, his promotion, all that he said was, Messiah, he called him the anointed one. He called him the Christ. He called him the son of the living God. That was it. I became the first to call him God. You remember when that happened? I said, my Lord and my God. Yes, it is true, I doubted. It is true, when I heard the story, I said, no, it did not happen. But when he showed himself to me, did you not hear what I said? I said, my Lord and my God. And, and why is everybody not talking about that? Why is everybody only talking about when I doubted? I was the first to call him God. And now you have even joined them to call me the doubting one, not the one, the first to call him God. That is not fair. Father Emmanuel, let this be a lesson for you and your parishioners. It is never over until it is over. The first can be last, and the last can be first. Don't go around bragging that you were born and raised Catholic, that you went through Catholic schools all your life, that you received all the sacraments early enough in your life. Stop laughing at those who have fallen away from the faith. You do not know their complete story. It is not by your power that you are not a single mom. It is not by your strength that your marriage is still standing. The one that you look down on today may become better than you tomorrow. You remember the story of the young man? You know, the, the young man Saul. We were together as apostles. When we were thinking about those going to hell, we gave him number one because he was persecuting Christians. But just a twinkle of an eye, and just in a flash, on his way to Damascus, he was converted. And he went ahead of all of us. Now he's more popular than even the 12 of us who are apostles. If you go through the Bible today, there are more books attributed to Paul than those of us who came before him. And that's not all. Uh, you remember, uh, who was the first to join Jesus in heaven from the cross? Not any of us, the apostles. It was a criminal. One of those who died with him on the cross. You remember, Jesus told him, today you will be with me in paradise. The first becoming last, and the last becoming first. And so, Father Emmanuel, do not spend time today talking about how I doubted. Spend more time today telling your parishioners about how the appearance of Jesus to the apostles today reveals the gift of divine mercy 
which we celebrate today. You notice what happened? Jesus did not come on a fault-finding mission. He came to us. And what did he say? He said, peace be with you. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. He said, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. No fault-finding. One would have expected him to have expressed disappointment at Peter for denying him three times. One would have expected him to have scolded you know, the young apostle. No, he was not an apostle. The, the, the young disciple, he was a disciple, the young man, the one who ran away naked when Jesus was arrested. One would have expected Jesus to have blamed me. In fact, to have kicked me out of the college of the apostles because I doubted the story of the resurrection. But he did none of those. What did he do? He forgave us even before we said we were sorry. Father Emmanuel, I was angry because you began your homily by calling me names. But you know what? I have forgiven you because Jesus forgave me and gave me peace. And so now, you go and forgive those who have offended you even if they don't apologize to you. For then, you will find peace in your life.